learners welcome to amat coaching and i'm your teacher dr anam today we will study about nutrition in fungi fungi they lack chlorophyll and we know that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis and photosynthesis helps in the production of food it means that fungi cannot prepare their own food because there are no chlorophyll present but the fungi they obtain their food directly by the absorption from their immediate environments and that's why the fungi they are known as absorptive heterotrophs heterotrophs means that they cannot prepare their own food and absorptive means that they are going to absorb the minerals from their environment on the basis of nutrition the fungi they are divided into five types decomposers saprotrophs parasites predators and mutualistics First of all let's talk about the decomposers the decomposers they obtain their food directly from the dead organic matter it means that they are going to attack on the dead organic matter then they are going to secrete the digestive enzymes that digestive enzymes they are going to digest the dead organic matter of the dead bodies and in this way the organic matter which is produced will be absorbed by the fungi so in this way they are going to get their nutrition from the dead organic matter or the dead bodies this is the reason that after some times the dead bodies of plants or animals they disappear because the fungi or the decomposers they are going to digest them and take their nutrients for their own benefit the second ones are saprotrophs the saprotrophs they anchor the substrate by modified hyphae which is known as rhizoids here you can see that these are the rhizoids and in this way they are going to anchor on the substrate the rhizoids are just like the anchor which is used for the big ships to stay in the water or stay in the sea so what they are going to do that they are going to anchor on the substrate and then they are going to decompose their cellulose and the lignin along with the bacteria the saprotrophs are the major decomposers of biosphere contributing in the recycling of the elements so in this way all the dead material or the plant dead bodies they are going to be decomposed or the elements present in them for example carbon oxygen nitrogen they are going to be recycled in the environment then comes the parasites the parasites they are going to absorb the nutrients directly from the living host cytoplasm with the help of special hyphae which are known as hosteria so here you can see this is the fungal hyphae and this fungal hyphae is going to penetrate the living plant cell by the help of special hyphae which is known as hosteria so this these are the hosteria which have penetrated the live or living plant cells there are two types of parasites one is obligate the other one is facultative the obligate parasites they can grow only on their living host and they cannot grow on the available growth culture medium for example you want to grow the obligate parasite in the laboratory on the plates you cannot grow them because they can only live on their living host for example mild dews and most rust species they are obligate parasites then comes the facultative parasites they can grow on their host as well as they can grow by themselves on the artificial growth media it means that you can grow them in the laboratory or they can also grow on their host they are going to take the benefit from the host in the form of nutrients then comes the predators the predators they are going to paralyze the prey and then they are going to penetrate them and absorb the nutritional content that is why they are known as predators for example the oyster mushroom this mushroom is going to attack on the nematodes it means the nematode is their prey they are going to penetrate the nematodes and then going to take the nutrients from the nematodes moreover some species of arthropoteres they are going to trap the soil nematodes by forming the constricting rings these are the constricting rings they are going to help the fungi to keep the nematodes in the restricted mode and not allowing them to move or run away after that they are going to invade their hyphae and then digest the victim 
Moreover, some fungi they also secrete the sticky substances in which the prey they are going to be trapped and they cannot move or they cannot run away just like the spiders which produce the sticky substance in the form of web. Then come the mutualistic relationship. I have already made a detailed video on the mutualistic relationship. I will share the link in the i button. But for a quick summary, there are two types of mutualistic relationship. One is lichen, which is a relationship between a fungi and a green algae. And the second one is mycorrhiza, which is a relationship between a fungi and the roots of plants. In the mutualistic symbiotic relationship, the fungi and the other partner, they are benefiting from each other and not harming. So this is our lesson on nutrition in fungi. If you have any question related to this topic, you can ask me in the comment section. I will see you in the next video.